as we finish off December of a most interesting year, let me ask you a question. What does Agile mean to you? Well, to me, it means freedom. That's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So great to see you. Thank you, as always, for being listeners, for being fans. I appreciate each and every one of you, wherever you come from. I hope you had a great year, despite all of the challenges and weirdness. It was a strange one, wasn't it? Well, now, this would be a great time to do a reflection on what Agile means to each of us. But first, let's take a moment to remember why we're here. To create an elite tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There are so many resources out there about what you need to do to be Agile, but we focus on who you need to become in order to lead teams. So let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a truly unique and powerful force in this industry. Now remember, if this helps you, tell your friends. Don't forget to join us in the Badass Agile Listener Lounge on Facebook. So, what does Agile mean to you? To many, it represents a way of doing projects. To some, it represents a way of delivering product. To others, it means a method of delivering value to customers. To some people, it simply means an opportunity to do things better, maybe even cheaper or faster. But I think sometimes it's dangerous to look at Agile in any of these ways because we're asking it to deliver on a promise that's very hard to deliver on. If you think about the reasons why it's so hard to deliver on some of these promises, it's generally because of human problems or problems of scale, things that are very difficult to prevent and very difficult to overcome with nothing more than a framework and a set of guiding principles. So I think we should start from a place that's a little bit easier to wrangle. In an ideal world, Agile means one thing to me. It means freedom. Specifically, it means the freedom to design optimal team flows. That is to say, Agile gives us the tools and the concepts, but less so the structures and processes for perfect team flow. You should be able to work with any team in any environment, working collectively towards any outcome, and help them find their own perfect flow. So this means that you'll work with each individual team to not only create the ideal scrum cadences or design and tune whatever columns may show up in your Kanban board, but you're also enabled and empowered to look at the characteristics of the team, the characteristics of the client, and then decide whether these guys should do scrum or whether they should do Kanban, whether they should do three-week sprints or two-week sprints or not do sprints at all. How often do you need a stand-up and who is valuable to invite to that stand-up? All of these things you're free to design. And when you look at it that way, we shouldn't be looking at Agile as something that you have to learn, something that you have to study, or something that you have to implement in a certain way to get great results from it. In the ideal, you want to build that perfect flow for each individual team. And that only comes by sitting in a team room with people and listening to them, watching them work seeing where things fall apart, seeing how the individual characteristics of every individual on that team contributes to the successes and the problems of a given flow of work. Here's another thing that Agile should give you the freedom to do, to switch gears endlessly. One thing we learned from 2020 is that businesses need to be able to pivot. They need to be nimble, which means when they need to switch gears in terms of customer focus, product focus, strategic focus, they need to be able to do so without completely feeling like they're going to crash the boat. Like all of the systems and processes and teams that they've built are going to have to be rebuilt from scratch at massive cost. It shouldn't be that way. A business should be free to pivot and change and re-envision and visualize new outcomes, new futures, new successes without having to worry about breaking their structures and frameworks. Agile should be giving us the freedom to not only change priorities, but to change product focus, change strategy, and even change and rebuild the existing teams, structures, places of working, and systems of working in a heartbeat. Now, if you can do that, you've given your business true agility because it doesn't matter what happens in the marketplace, they can shift and pivot to meet the challenge. 
The next thing that Agile gives us the freedom to do is to dissociate failure from other negative words like waste and individual or team worth. We want to be free to make mistakes and not have that reflect negatively on our self-image, our image of one another, our reputation in the organization, or even our reputation as a firm. Furthermore, we don't want to consider failure something that leads to financial ruin. Failure is how we learn. Failure is how we're free to try experiments and then cut them after a couple of weeks or a couple of months when they're not working. Investing in failure, investing in experimentation, is what allows us to be nimble and have our next great idea ready. And it's really agile and its structures that enable that kind of work. If we're not iterating quickly, we're not able to discard ideas before we've invested too much in them. If we're not operating in agile ways by showing and demonstrating finished work and putting it in the hands of customers frequently, you're not going to find out that you've got a failure on your hands until months or maybe even years into the project, at which point it is really expensive to change course or to fix things. And then finally, the last area where I feel Agile delivers massive freedom is the freedom to switch from great idea to great idea. If you want to innovate, especially as a small or medium business, you want to not put stock in one big idea. You want to be able to put stock in the value of all of your ideas, which means we need an environment in which we're free to ideate, hypothesize, test, and discard things and simply say, this has got potential, but for now we'd rather shelve it and work on priority one. See, if you don't have that freedom and that flexibility in the way that you deliver product, deliver projects, deliver customer value, if you don't have that, you're going to be married to your one big idea. You're going to put all of your loot behind what you think is your best shot at success because you don't have a framework where you can work a little bit on one idea, develop another idea on the side, develop multiple ideas and have them in your back pocket in case whatever you're working on is your highest priority, truly fails, changes course, or as we've seen this year, the universe becomes unstapled and everything has to change anyway. Now listen, if you're not leveraging this freedom as part of your big corporate team, wherever you happen to be working, you know, if it's a financial services or insurance or government organization, if you don't feel like you have these freedoms with Agile, you got a choice. Either you can fix them and create the freedom for yourselves to become the best performing team in your company, the most innovative, the ones with the best and highest volume of new ideas. Or you can take this to the streets for yourself. Now, this is where the real freedom lies. That if you're an entrepreneur, a small or medium business, what you need Agile to do is to support all of the behaviors that make a modern small business successful. The ability to interact directly and intimately, one-on-one -on -one with your customers, to ask them what they like, what they need, and to show them products and prototypes so that they're instrumental and they're part of your ongoing product development. I think as a small or medium business, you need to be able to shift gears on a dime. And I think that the kind of freedom that Agile provides is perfect for small or medium business in exactly that way. So if you're hitting the market and suddenly find you have a worthy competitor in the exact same space as you, you can either change focus or you can niche down and alter your efforts to get more competitive and you can make those decisions overnight. And this is what's so exciting for me with the promise of agility. So I think you'll have more fun and you'll enjoy working with Agile more if you don't see this as a shortcut to cheaper projects, but really a way to enjoy your daily work because it liberates you to do all of these things, to create, to express your ideas, to change your mind, to pivot, to have something prove out as wrong, or at least different than the way you thought it was going to be. These kinds of freedoms are necessary if we want to bring out the best in our people. And this is one of the things that I think big enterprise just doesn't get, is you'll get more out of your people if they love what they do, if they come into work every day feeling free and liberated and energized to do the work they're most passionate about doing for you, for your organization. And then finally, if they have excellent tools to help exercise those freedoms. That's what Agile represents to me. And as we move into 2021, you're going to see that the marketplace is changing. And that Agile that we did a year ago is going to be very different than the Agile that we're required to do now. Maybe this year we'll see a new world order in terms of politics and leadership. We're probably going to see a new way of doing things 
due to health concerns, but also the face of business itself is changing and it's never changed more rapidly than it has in the past calendar year. So take this time at the end of the year to reflect not on whether or not you're doing Agile according to the book or whether you're following the example of every other Agile practitioner that you're reading about on social media or in the latest and greatest book, but think instead about what Agile does for you and your way of working. What can this do for your team and the way that they collaborate? What can this do for your clients and customers and the way they invest in success, profitability, and competitive position? This would be fun to spend some time with your teams with. What does Agile enable you to do in the abstract, in the ideal? What should Agile give you that you can't get by following a specific process, framework, or methodology? That's something to think about, guys. Let me know what you come up with. You can reach out at badassagile.com. You can find me on Twitter at badass underscore agile. I look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, stay badass. Badass.